Have you ever been talking to a girl, but it seems a little too nice and friendly and you end up in the friend zone? Well, my friend, it's time to step up your flirting game so that she sees you as a potential lover instead of just another nice guy. Because flirting is one of the most important attraction skills. So watch closely and take some good notes. My name is Matt Artisan from The Attractive Man and this is six ways to flirt with a girl to make her like you. I'm Matt. He has mastered the art of seduction. Many boot camps encourage men to be assertive. A woman wants to be turned on. We've done all the testing, we know what works. Now, most guys think that you have to spend lots of money on the girl, buy lots of flowers and gifts, and spend weeks and weeks courting her to get the girl that you really want. But the reality is that women only care about how you make them feel. And one of the best ways to make her feel romantic feelings without spending lots of time and lots and lots of money on her is through flirting. The dictionary defines flirting as behaving as though attracted to or trying to attract someone, but for amusement rather than with serious intentions. And this is great because Flirting is basically just showing your interest in her in a fun, covert manner. It's not telling her how much you like her and how much you're in love with her and telling her how beautiful she is and showering her with compliments. That's too direct and that will usually push her away and feel a little creepy. Instead, do it more subtly and more indirectly and playfully with some of the ways that I'm about to show you. Now, without further ado, here's my countdown to my six favorite ways to flirt with a girl. Number Six is teasing, which is poking fun of her, but with positive intention. It's not meant to make her feel bad. It's not meant to be malicious. A lot of guys do this wrong because they see the woman as being higher status and more value than him. He sees himself down here, so he wants to make fun of her, tease her, and neg her, and make her feel bad and bring her down. Basically show her, I'm cooler than you. You're down here beneath me. Never do that. A, it doesn't work that well. A high value woman who is secure in herself is going to see right past that and she's just going to dismiss you and move on to somebody else. Instead, be an awesome guy. Be up here. Be a 10. See yourself as a 10 and bring people up to your level. Bring people up to your status instead of trying to put them down. And the key is that it's in the moment. It's not some pre-planned line that you intend to say. It's just something she does. You make fun of her mannerisms or maybe she's walking and she stumbles and you don't tell her she's such a dork and you can't take her anywhere and you're embarrassed by her in that type of negative tonality, it's a playful tonality. You tease her and say, oh, I can't take you anywhere. Or, oh, you're such a klutz. The point is that it's all about the vibe, that you're having fun and just enjoying the experience. It's how you would treat your friends, right? Your close friends, you tease each other about certain things which creates a sense of rapport when you do it to a woman that you meet for the first time because we usually only tease people that we feel very comfortable with. So if you tease her in the right way, she will feel that rapport and feel closeness to you. It's like you're part of her inner circle. So it's more about the nonverbal than the actual specific words you say. For example, you can tease her about almost anything, just the way she says something. Maybe she says like a lot and you accuse her of being a valley girl. Again, it shouldn't be like, oh, you're a valley girl, I could never date you. It should be like, oh my God, you're such a valley girl. Do you, do you listen to yourself? Oh my God, this is never gonna work out. I'm nervous about this, because I'm not, I, don't, I can't do this. Oh, I bet you can. And here's a few other examples. See, this is why we can't have nice things. Are you just trying to get in my pants? You're so bad. Versus, are you just trying to get in my pants? Number five is role reversal, which is great because it flips the script. The traditional dating frame is courting. The man is chasing the woman. So instead, you just flip that around and accuse her of trying to get into your pants and accuse her of trying to seduce you. You might say, stop seducing me with your eyes, young lady. I see what you're doing. So bad. Or you might misinterpret something she says. Maybe she says she's going to go home and go to bed and you turn that into an invitation. I think I'm going to go to bed. I 
can't go to bed with you that easily. I mean, you need to buy me a drink first or something. <laughs> you can also accuse her for you escalating. So blame her for being the one that's causing you to make the moves on her. So you could say something like, if you look at me again like that, I'm going to be forced to kiss you. Remember, it's all in the delivery, in the tonality. Saying, if you look at me again like that, I'm going to be forced to kiss you. Stop. Stop looking at me like that. Is not flirting. Number four is role playing. This one is awesome because it creates this context and this frame of a fantasy world, which means you can flirt with her. You can tell her how much you are in love with her even, but it's just a joke. It's not real because it's a role play. For example, if you role play that you're getting married or that you're role playing that your boyfriend and girlfriend or it's like one of those epic romances where you're so in love, then she could go to the bathroom and you could say, darling, don't leave me. You're going to be gone for so long. What am I going to do? I know that sounds a little cheesy, but it's fun. It's playful. It's so different than what other guys would do in the bar where they're just like, hey, so how's your night going? You come here often? What do you do for work? <laughs> And in a marriage role play, which is one of my favorites, you can get away with talking about so much. Talk about your future relationships, where you would travel together, painting these pictures in her mind of you and her together. You know what? I like you. We're so going to get married. Instead of having a long engagement, we should just find my friend. Actually, he's right over there. He's an ordained minister. Come on. And you can also talk about very risque things because you're a married couple now. In fact, a few times I've taken my dates into adult bookstores after we've done this marriage role play and I'm just like, come on, honey, we need to spice up our romance. And I start whipping her with some of the whips and pick out some toys for her. And it's really fun and really ramps things up to the next level. Another role play I like is the mini relationship where you just have like a five minute relationship with a girl as boyfriend and girlfriend. I, I have a, I have a fear of commitment, so we can just do this for five minutes. You can be my girlfriend for five a minutes five minute hand hold. and that's it. For just five minutes. Five minutes. That's all I can commit to. Can I keep to. walking this way? Yeah, let's go. We can <laughs> okay, walk. Girl, yes. Let's do this. Your... It creates that sense of closeness that you're in a relationship right away, but it takes away the pressure because you're going to break up in five minutes. In fact, I use this as an opener going up to girls and saying, Hey, can I be your boyfriend or will you be my girlfriend? And if you want to know how well it worked, it actually quite surprised me. Check out the video, the links to the videos. I'll put them down in the description. By the way, remember if you haven't downloaded my free conversation cheat sheet that's packed with other flirty examples, make sure to download that right now. There's a link down in the description for that as well. Next is touching, which is a great way to flirt as long as you don't overdo it. If you're touching her too much too soon, then it's no longer covert. It's very obvious what you're doing and to everybody around you, they can tell you really like this girl and it can definitely creep her out. So you must make sure to balance your interest and this actually applies to every one of these concepts that you balance the showing interest by taking it away. You're saying, Hey, I like you, but I'm not sure about you or with touching it's, Oh, you touch, but then you take it away. You should never be like, I like you. I like you. I like you. I like you touch, touch, touch. You need to do a little bit and then take it away. Two steps forward, one step back. And touching works so well because it releases oxytocin, which is a feel good hormone that is also released during orgasm. But the key is that the touching is in context. If you're completely touching her out of nowhere and it's not relevant to the situation, then it's going to seem creepy. So here's a few ways to touch her where it is in context. First, there's greeting touch where you shake her hands, but to make it flirtatious, shake her hand and hold it longer than normal while looking into her eyes or give her a kiss on the cheek. Then there's also games like thumb wrestling or slap hands. There's also observational touch where you notice something about her, like she's wearing a cool necklace or she has a ring on her finger or a watch. Also leading her from one place to another place. You can go arm in arm or hand in hand. And there's also conversational touching to emphasize a point when you want to make something you're talking about seem more dramatic. You can also do correcting touch, which I love to do, which is when you fix her outfit or you take something out of her hair or you can even fix her posture 
and get her to stand up straight. Bad posture is a huge pet peeve of mine. Number two I call the look of desire, which is using your eyes to flirt with her, which can be really covert and have a huge impact. As they say, the eyes are the window to the soul and they can really create a lot of tension. And on the flip side, you can actually make the interaction very platonic by breaking the eye contact, by looking down, which is very submissive and shy, and can make her feel like you're a weak man. If you want her to feel like you're a strong, powerful alpha male, then hold the eye contact longer than normal, but don't just look at her bug-eyed like this or like this. That's not flirtatious. You need to look at her with desire. You need to appreciate her beauty and allow yourself to feel that feminine energy, we'll call it, that intoxicating feeling that a beautiful woman gives you when you're in her presence and just soften your gaze, just allow yourself to appreciate that beauty and let that appreciation for her attraction come through your eyes, not in a creepy way where you're like, oh my god, damn, look at you. Not like that, but where you're just looking at her like you know you could give her the utmost sexual satisfaction. You could give her the utmost pleasure in bed if she was so lucky. When you give her that look of desire, she will melt in front of you. And almost every guy on our boot camps needs help with their eye contact initially to really ramp up that sexual tension. Practice not blinking. I'm doing it right now. I'm gonna seduce you with my eyes. But seriously, I've noticed this in a lot of Hollywood movies where the interaction is very intense and seductive, that there's not a lot of blinking, because believe it or not, blinking releases the tension. Also, stand a little closer than normal. That will increase that flirty vibe and that sexual tension. And also, practice your smirk. When you're looking at her with desire and you're appreciating her attractive beauty, just have a little smirk on your face. Not an ear-to-ear -ear grin, because that releases the tension and that just shows that you're nervous. <laughs> but instead, just appreciate the beauty. I've seen guys on our workshops as well, when they first approach a woman, it's so serious and they're looking at her like this and they have good eye contact, but they have a stone cold face and they're expressionless. When you do that, she's going to think you're a serial killer because she can't read you. She needs to be able to read that, read your intention and feel that you're not a threat and that this is a positive flirtatious vibe. So that sm subtle smile or smirk will really help with that. And number one, which I consider the foundation of flirting is push-pull, which is showing her interest either direct, verbally, or through your eye contact, or non-verbally, through touching, and then taking it away. It's maintaining that balance of, I like you, but I'm not sure about you yet. Showing desire, yet being a challenge. Because if you show too much interest too soon, she feels like, why does this guy like me so much? He must be desperate. He must not have other women in his life. But if you're too much of a challenge and you push her away too much and you're kind of a then she can also lose interest because she's like, why bother? This guy doesn't even like me. The dance of dating is all about showing interest and then taking it away. Remember, two steps forward, one step back. For example, if it's a really tall girl, you could say, you know, you're really cute, but I think you're just too short for me. And you can keep this push-pull dynamic going throughout the interaction, even when you're physically escalating, even when you're kissing her. You can pull away. Okay, that's all you get. No more. It's like you're giving her a little taste, right? When you show interest, especially when you're kissing or touching, it feels good. But then when you take it away, she wants more. If you keep going further, 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 escalate, 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 interest, 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 she's gonna pull back. When you chase somebody, they run away. But if you pull back, she's gonna start chasing you. This works really well when you're escalating because every time you make a move on her, you're showing interest so you can balance it out by taking a step back and putting a restriction on it. I call it restricted requests. For example, when you're getting her phone number, do you text? Okay, you're not crazy, are you? All right. Or when you invite her back to your place, which can seem like a big step in the relationship, she knows what's gonna happen. 
to balance that out so it doesn't feel like such a big deal, you just put a restriction on it. Okay, we can go back to my place, but we have to be good. You have to keep your hands That's above cool. my waist, of course. Oops. All right, good. Let's go. <laughs> and then she's actually more likely to comply and say, okay, we can go back to your place because you put that restriction on it. So we got teasing, role reversal, role play, touching, the look of desire, and push pull. Next time you go out or next time you're on a date, use some of these techniques. But remember, it's all about how you do it. Your delivery and how you feel internally is everything and is going to make it either a flirty, romantic, and sensual interaction versus platonic, weird, or creepy. And remember, for more flirty techniques, make sure to download my free conversation cheat sheet. There's a link down in the description and to the right of the screen that will give you word-for-word -word flirty examples to ramp things up to the next level and make her more attracted to you. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and check out our boot camp schedule because I'm flying all over the world teaching a select few guys. So if you think you qualify, then apply now. Check that out. My name is Matt Artisan from The Attractive Man, and I'll see you in the next video.